Hey, what's going on guys? Ryan Weber with Ryan Weber Training. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about organic versus non-GMO and maybe a couple of surprising differences that you just didn't know about, because I sure didn't. Stay tuned. What's going on guys welcome back i am ryan weber your host with ryan weber training and if you haven't already you guys thank you so very much for coming and watching this video and smashing that like button because you're about to be delivered some good organic raw valuable material <laughs> for real no we got some good uh, good stuff for you guys here today so i've got a lot of notes i've got things written on index cards and my computer the first time i've done it this way so bear with me as i sift through all this wonderful information i'm going to give you guys and uh, make sure i can just give you guys something that's going to be valuable and you can take and you can use right now that is the whole point of this channel so sit back relax enjoy smash the like button if you haven't already subscribe share this with a friend anybody who know who will benefit and uh yeah let's get with it so we're talking about today Today, non-GMO versus organic, organic versus non-GMO. And the first question that someone was asking me about was, Ryan, I thought they were the same. Aren't they the same? Well, quite honestly, I thought they were pretty darn close too, until I went online, did a little bit of further research and found out that it's just not the case. Now, I wanna preface this video telling you I am not a doctor, I am not a scientist, I am not a lab rat, I am not certified to be some special research analyst, but uh, I do have a brain, some common sense, some experience, and you know, a few thousand people I've coached on these topics, so I'm gonna share with you guys what I've found and my own personal experiences with uh, eating a certain way, and you guys can draw your conclusion at the end of this video and decide for yourselves. All right, cool. So with that being said, uh, non-GMO. Basically, non-GMO is just implying that the product in question is not made with any type of genetically modified ingredient, is not enhanced with genetically modified ingredients. Organic is, well, just that. Organic is organic. You know, it's farmed without the use of adding chemicals. And, you know, a little side note, you're going to hear some pretty surprising, you know, statistics here on, uh, on the non-GMO side, I think, and it says that our organic is farmed without using any type of chemicals. Further research has shown me that they still use some. It's just a very small list that they can choose from, but organic is definitely gonna be a good way to go. Okay, so non-GMO simply means non-GMO. That's just what the label means. Organic simply means organic derived from organic materials. So when you see the non-GMO label versus the organic label, that's what they're saying. Now the growing methods. So GMO foods can be grown using organic methods and non-organic methods, where organic foods are grown using just organic methods. I don't wanna get into all that, but you guys can look it up and find out the differences yourself. Relationship between non-GMO and organic. So non-GMO can be organic or not organic, and organic is obviously going to be non-GMO. However, non-GMOs, although I thought a lot of the times they could be or were considered organic as well, they are not always organic. I thought for the longest time, and I think a few other people did too, because I had conversations about this, that you know it was basically just a label you were buying. Now I know there's going to be a difference between organic and non-GMO. I'm not uh, that naive, but I was under the impression that they were very, very similar. So the things I'm going to read to you guys next, a couple of comparisons, are going to tell a very different story. Let me go ahead and pull those up for you and uh, we'll get going with it right here. So organic versus non-GMO. Now there's going to be in these columns here that you can see a check marks for yes, this is true for organic and either a check or an X for this is true or up for debate for non-GMO. So I cannot say indefinitely, but that's how I'm going to give you guys and deliver the information. Okay, so bear with me here. Uh, <clears throat> okay, non-GMO ingredients. What do these labels really mean? So organic, non-GMO ingredients, yes, that is true for organic, and yes, that is true for non-GMO. We just talked about that. No artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. Yes, that is true for organic. However, that is up for debate with non-GMO products. You have to be really careful and you have to read the label, guys. Reading the label is gonna be so important and so key. If you take anything away from this video, that's going to be it. No synthetic fertilizers or sewage or sludge. Yes, that is true for organic. Up for debate with non-GMO. No toxic, persistent pesticides. 
Yes, it is true for organic. It is up for debate with non-GMO. No antibiotics or hormones for animals. Yes, that is true for organic. Up for debate for non-GMO. Animals eat 100% organic feed and pasture. Yes, that is true for organic. Up for debate for non-GMO. Protects wildlife and promotes biodiversity. Yes, that is true for organic. It is up for debate for non-GMO. Enhances soil fertility. Yes, that is true for organic and up for debate for non-GMO. And regulated by federal law. Yes, that is true for organic and up for debate on non-GMO. Something to keep in mind here, guys. Whatever you are looking for research or statistics or data to back something up, one of the things that I've found in my own experience is you can find the answer yes to anything you're looking for. So if I was looking for, is organic good? I'm going to find answers saying, yes, organic is good. If I was looking for, is organic bad? I'm going to find answers saying, yes, organic is bad. And they're both going to have their data and their research backing up what it is they're looking for. So it almost kind of leads you to question, well, then why would you even look if you can find good and bad and who can you really trust? And I'm bringing this point up because I want you guys to do your due diligence. I want you to make sure you do your own research. And anything I tell you, especially with a topic like this, feel free to question it. Like I said, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor. I am just basically reading the information that I found from you guys and I'll give my own personal experience at the end as far as how I feel and how my clients feel when they eat a certain way. So the next uh, next graph I'm going to read here to you guys is going to be the same thing, organic versus non-GMO. A check mark meaning yes for organic and uh, red X meaning questionable up for debate for non-GMO. So here we go. No GMOs used, obviously yes for organic and yes for non-GMO. No synthetic pesticides linked to lymphoma and leukemia. They are saying yes for organic and up for debate for non-GMO. This one's getting a little more personal here because they're going to be giving actual examples of diseases and disorders. No Roundup herbicides linked to kidney disease, breast cancer, and birth defects. They are saying yes for organic and up for debate for non-GMO. There are no ingredients laced with residues from the neurotoxin hexane. They are saying yes for organic and up for debate for non-GMO. There's no sewage sludge, human waste, contaminated endocrine disruptors, and heavy metals. Okay, no sewage sludge, human waste, contaminated with endocrine disruptors and heavy metals. Sorry, I read that twice. They are saying yes for organic, up for debate for non-GMO. There's no growth promoting antibiotics contributing to weight gain and antibiotic resistance. They are saying yes for organic, up for debate for non-GMO. And there is no ractopamine, ractopamine, drug residues banned in dozens of countries. They're saying yes for organic and up for debate for non-GMO. I think I got that last word right. I am not really sure. But here's what I want to point out to you guys. Reading the label is going to be absolutely key when you're trying to decide what's going to be the best thing to put into your body. If you look at the labels and you start seeing a whole bunch of things you cannot pronounce, my own personal experience, maybe put that back and look for a healthier, cleaner option, something you can actually understand what it is you're reading and what you're putting into your body. So what's the big difference here between the non-GMO and organic? It seems to me, based upon this research, that organic is definitely going to be the cleaner, healthier way to go, and that non-GMO, while definitely is going to be much better than shopping the conventional uh, methods or the conventional foods or choices, there are still some things that are extremely questionable as to the quality of what non-GMO could necessarily mean. Now, everything I just read to you, you cannot necessarily take that as gospel. And we're like, well, Ryan, why the heck did you read it? Because what I found, again, based on personal experience, is this is the comparison, this is data that could be. I'm not saying that it necessarily is. My own personal opinion now, let's go ahead and factor this in. Me, my family, we shop organic, we shop non-GMO indefinitely. Now, when I say indefinitely, that's going to be our first choice. We still do shop and use conventional groceries. It is what it is. You know, sometimes the organic just gets to be too darn expensive. Sometimes the organic just looks like crap and it's rotting on the shelf. Sometimes organic is not going to be readily available. Now, how do I feel about shopping non-GMO? Overall, I still feel pretty darn good because I know when I'm shopping non-GMO and it has that, you know, non-GMO label on it, it's going to be a lot better than something that I don't know that doesn't have that label on it. And just look at the back, like I said, the labels. You can start reading the ingredients. Something made with non-GMO, there's gonna be a lot more uh, care going into that product and the manufacturer of that product compared to something that was just kind of slapped together to get a product out there on the shelf. Now, I can also say that 
this is gonna be a big influence, have a big influence on digestive issues. I know people, myself included, have had some issues in the past where you just kind of get you know, constipated and stopped up or you get very gassy. And this will definitely come down to the type of food you're eating. If you're eating you know, a cleaner diet, you're gonna have better digestion, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna have more energy compared to a dirtier diet where it's like, you know, excess fast and fats and processed foods and other garbage and dyes and artificial colors and flavors galore, you know, that can actually cause a lot of bloating, indigestion. It can even cause, you know, diseases like irritable bowel and um, other, you know, not so fun digestive issues and disorders. Now, another one of the issues I wanna bring up comes down to uh, autoimmune disorders. So years ago, I've known some people who were diagnosed with lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disease where basically your immune system begins to attack itself. And uh, I remember reading a book from a doctor and she did something really kind of cool, I thought, to put her lupus into remission. And what she did was she basically went to a vegetable, fruit, and nut style diet. You know, very low protein from animal sources. Basically, it was just kind of eating organic and non-GMO all the way through. As she started going through the process, she realized, you know, hey, organic isn't always available. So she was also using some of the conventional fruits and vegetables and whatever they had available so she could, you know, make her shakes and smoothies and the meals and everything that she needed. Fortunately for her, it worked out really well. Her lupus went into remission and she wrote a book about it and she's helped you know hundreds if not thousands of people do the same thing. I bring this up because I want to point out that just because you're not eating organic or non-GMO, if you're eating you know, just regular conventional groceries, you know, produce, things of that nature, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily gonna be sick or be put at a greater health risk. You know, if you're eating healthy food overall, you're gonna look healthier, you're gonna feel healthier, you're gonna be healthier. Compared to eating garbage, where you're gonna feel like garbage, you might start to look like garbage, and you're just really gonna be kind of all out of whack because food has such a huge impact on our emotions, digestion, and everything else that's going on. How we think, thinking clearly, uh, being happy, being sad. It's pretty pretty bizarre how it works out. But um, just wanted to give you guys my own personal feedback and kind of tell you there that, you know, don't worry if you can't afford organic or non-GMO and you're eating conventional, you're going to be okay. I would just advise you to get on a good nutrition plan and eat and healthy eat healthy foods, make the right choices, and get a coach. Visit ryanweber.com if you get a chance. I've got some programs up there I can guide you through it. Or if there's somebody else you have in mind, you know, listen to them. Uh, do whatever you gotta do. It really doesn't matter and make a difference to me. I just wanna make sure that you're gonna be healthier and feeling better. So, okay guys, really quick recap. What we talked about in this video, we basically talked about organic versus non-GMO. We talked about a lot of the differences. I'm not gonna go through all of them again, but go back and watch these videos uh, a couple of times and you'll kind of start to see Maybe make a note, make a list of the differences between organic and non-GMO. In the future, I will make a video talking about the conventional foods, conventional produce, and the differences between those versus organic and non-GMO as well. But I wanted to start off with this one, just kind of give you guys some perspective, because you know, here where I thought they were relatively close and the same, turns out they may not be. They might be, they may not be just depends on the manufacturer, the company, and uh, what they're trying to produce. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't hit that like button already, please do so. If you have not subscribed, do that too. And until the next time, we will see you on the next video. Like, comment, share. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Peace. Talk to you guys soon.